Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. Um, it is dark in here, I'm not sure why, but actually, sorry, I do know why, because it's dark outside. Not dark, but just not bright, that's for sure. It is called a cloudy day. A day where it's hard to be happy. Actually, let's talk about that. When it's hard to be happy. You know, it's interesting because a lot of people will say that uh, that's all they want. That's all they want in life is they just want to be happy. Um, isn't that kind of a, one of those uh, drives we have? In fact, in some ways you could say we're made for happiness, but we're going to come back to that in a second. We all have a longing for happiness. That is for sure. That's not like news of the year. That is just kind of something we all know. We all long to be happy. We all want to be happy. And some of us make it the goal of our life to be happy. I remember hearing a psychologist talk about that and said, that is a terrible way to live. <laughs> so if you're like, that's me, like, oh, never mind. Um, that's a terrible way to live if happiness is the goal. Why? Because happiness is almost always circumstantial. It's almost always a thing we experience, not something we can actually achieve. I mean, think about this. Uh, we have the levels of happiness. I'll make another video on that at one point. But we have um, like pleasure, comfort. I just want to. I just want to be at peace. I just want to have like you know uh, the kind of food I want or the temperature I want. I want to have the life I want. When I get what I want, then I'll be happy. Another way we can see happiness is is being done, like being at peace. Like you know, I know this is probably true for your life. Is that you have a lot of things to do. There's probably a lot of stresses in your life, and you can think, once I'm done with those things, then I'll be happy. Unfortunately, we know that uh, we get done with that thing or we you know, accomplish this other task or we get the thing we thought would make us happy and we know it doesn't make us happy. So what we end up doing is we just end up moving the goalposts. We say, okay, well, that didn't make me happy. It's probably going to be the next thing that makes me happy. And then we do that thing. We realize I'm still not happy. Okay, so it can't just be you know, pleasure and it can't just be an accomplishment or having the thing we thought would make us happy. Happiness is by its very nature, as I said earlier, circumstantial. I mean, happiness even comes from the word happenstance or they're connected to each other, which simply means chance. So if you made it your life's pursuit to be happy, it'd be like basing your life off of a flip of the coin or a roll of the dice. Happiness cannot be connected. If you want to actually have it in, in a way that, that isn't circumstantial, in a way that can't be taken away, it can't be mere chance. So we long for happiness, but I'm going to clarify this. We long for happiness, but we're made for joy. We long for happiness, but we're made for joy. They're two different things. They can be connected. Like they both are feelings. They're both pleasant feelings, right? But did you know there's a, there was a, uh, a studier, scientist person out of UC Berkeley who said that Americans who don't experience a great level of happiness, we need to learn how to be happy. For one, our idea of, hands, of happiness is very self-focused. Like it's, it's all about like, it's all about me. It's all about how am I doing? How am I feeling? Secondly, our idea or notion of happiness, we have this false idea of happiness where happiness simply is a, what he calls a heightened sense of euphoria. So we think like, yeah, if I'm not experiencing this heightened sense of euphoria, then I must not be happy. And so we, you see, we just hamstring ourselves right and left and, and forwards and backwards if we pursue happiness. But if we, understood what joy was, then we actually can live knowing that we're made for joy. We actually can read the scripture that tells us a bunch of times, rejoice in all circumstances, rejoice in any state in life, any place you are in life, you actually can have joy. Happiness is circumstantial, it's up to chance, but joy is something entirely different. Here's my definition of joy. I came across it a couple years ago and I really like it because it actually I think is true. Joy is the abiding and pervasive sense of well-being. Say that like 12 more times, right? Joy is the abiding and pervasive sense of well-being. Well, what if you're in the middle of a crisis? What if you're in the middle of sorrow? What if you're in the middle of uncertainty and sadness and all these things? Can you still have joy? Can you still have this abiding and pervasive sense of well-being? Yes, you can. Why? Jesus. <laughs> He's the right answer, as always. Jesus. Why? G.K. Chesterton, way back in the day, right, convert to Catholicism from atheism. One of his famous sayings about joy is this. Joy is the gigantic secret of the Christian. Joy is the gigantic secret of the Christian. Why? Because until Christ came along, until Jesus reveals who God truly is, 
you either believed in chance, that's it, fate, just your circumstances are your circumstances, or you might have believed in the gods. And the gods are fickle, right? The gods are powerful, they are maybe beautiful, they might be somewhat wise, but they are not just, they are not good, they do not care about you, and they do not love you. But then here comes Jesus and he reveals the very heart of who God is, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He says, actually, God is one and God is good and God is just and God knows your name and he cares about you. He loves you. In fact, how much does he love you? <laughs> God, Romans chapter 5, God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So this God who is good, who is just, who, is, um, who cares about you, who loves you, is also here. He's also with you. So if you go from a worldview where it's just chance or a worldview where it's the, the fickle gods, who you'd rather almost they not pay attention to you than they actually pay attention to you, to understanding, wait a second, there is one God, he is real, he is good, he cares about me, he knows my name, he loves me, and he's here. Well, that means in any circumstance, in any situation, I can choose joy. What, what is joy? The abiding and pervasive sense of well-being that regardless of what happens to me, regardless of my circumstances, I know that God knows my name. I know that he loves me and I know that he's here. That is why joy is the gigantic secret of the Christian. The letter of James, chapter 1, verse 2 says this, um, consider, it all, consider it all joy, my brothers, when you encounter various trials. Like, in all circumstances, even in the midst of trial, you can choose joy. Which is what? The abiding and pervasive sense of well-being. I may be afraid, but I'm not alone because you're with me. I don't know where this path is taking me, Lord, but I'm not afraid because you're with me. I may be in the midst of great pain and great sorrow and great uncertainty, but I am not afraid. God, because you are with me. Today, I just invite you, choose joy, knowing that God is with you. For all of us here at Ascension Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless. Oh, uh, like, subscribe, comment below, and be joyful, you know. Thank you.